Hi everyone, welcome to the first episode of Stars for 2018. First one, Kudus, bit of a legend, not many people have heard of him, uh, but came second in the World Tour, had some other good results last season. So we'll just go through his interview first, he's just saying how supporting Eritrea is pretty nuts. Um, he moved to Europe, he moved to Europe when he, when he went back in 2013, he must have been pretty young then, he must have been 20 years old, moved from Eritrea to France to a uh, race with Breton, Sechi and Bourgogne. Um, he's just saying he's never seen snow before, so that's quite odd. Well, I guess it's not odd if you live in Africa where it's really warm the whole time, but it's a bit of a shock to the system. Shows how much adversity he had, got over the classic European problem where it's like really co really competitive for a position. A lot of people, not just from Africa, but America and Asia and Australia, they often say it's a lot harder to race in Europe just because of the uh, competition for position. Uh, he's saying he had some racism because everyone basically thought he couldn't ride his bike properly because he wasn't European, uh, which is not great. Uh, and it's just saying how he's really excited, happy, can't wait to go next year. He wants to win a Grand Tour stage and wants to win the Tour de Suisse or a similar week-long stage. So, here we go. We have a little compilation of his uh, good results. They're both second, both in Spain. Uh, so, here we go. This is the race that you probably fascinating battle once we get. haven't seen. Uh, which is the Vuelta a Comunita a la Valencia. Sorry for my Spanish, I don't speak Spanish, unfortunately. Uh, but anyway, here we go. Big climb, pretty steep. And look, Quintana's attacking. And Kuda's straight on the wheel. Wout Pools, Zacharin, all the rest of the lads, no chance. Anyway, both high cane, well, both out the saddle, both very lean, both sub 60. Kuda's 57, Quintana's like 52 to 57, somewhere around there. No one really, no one really knows. Anyway, both of them looking back. But looking back, seeing the gap they've got, Quintana's just absolutely smashing on the front. And Kudus is just, you know, a bit lower cadence than normal. Pretty carved up, both these blokes just absolutely flying. Um, burning a lot of glycogen. Anyway, so here we go. Now they're in a sort of slightly flatter plot. FDJ blokes coming across. This is much more like sort of a 2 to 3%. Might even be a descent, but anyway, we're getting ramping back up. You can see some other blokes. Oh yeah, here we go. So sorry, we skipped ahead a bit. And uh, it's basically Quintana versus Kudus. Kudus has got very high cadence, very nice pedaling technique. Quintana's more of a low cadence bloke. Uh, still high, like still at 80, 85, but not, not as high as Kudus. Looks very relaxed, face is just staring ahead, no looking at his numbers. Just as I say that, he looks at the camera. But anyway, most of the time he's looking straight ahead. He's got a pretty, a pretty fat cassette on there, so it's probably a 30, 32 maybe, but not exactly sure. Uh, but yeah, looking just very calm, very collected. Look like, looks like he's really setting the pace. He's being, well, he is setting the pace, but he's also just looking like he's just not even suffering. Kudus is just realizing that he can't hold Quintana's wheel uh, on this slightly steeper part. Look, Quintana just dancing up. It's effortless for him. Well, it looks it. Um, and they're going around onto the steep part. You can tell in Spain or most places when it gets steep, they start to turn to concrete. So here we go, Quintana is still going, um, flying up. Kudus is just a little bit behind. But if we look at Quintana and Kudus, I think you could see that the only person who could really respond was Kudus, uh, which I think bodes well. Uh, obviously, it's an early season race, so it's hard to tell on people's form, whatever. But even so, I think it shows you already that he's got the potential to be a world-class climber if he can hold Quintana's wheel, even just for that small amount of time, which he did. Uh, a lot of other people really struggled that day. Um, I think it's also good because he shows that he can ride on the real steep stuff, which often people um, who have high gain struggle. Well, I mean, Chris Room often does. Uh, obviously, he's a lot lighter, but it's good that he can. He shows he can do that. Um, he's also done well in other races on slightly sort of more alpine climbs, more like seven percenters than this really steep and then sort of staccato effort. Quintana loves, and there you go, Quintana's just chilling out, knows he's won, knows he's won the overall, um, but when we go back, we'll see the time difference, so, you know, it's like, okay, fine, it's not like him versus Froome, where it's sort of like five seconds between them, like, yeah, it's a decent distance, and it wasn't a super long climb, but I think you can see the potentials there, definitely, uh, this is early season, and his target race was the welter, so, you know, like, wouldn't say he's in the best form, obviously, if he was doing the Giro like Quintana was, then he probably would have been better form. But here we go, as you can see, the photographer's running down. Kudus is you know, grinding a bit, but, like, he looks good. He looks confident. He's, like, it's good because he was in a good position to respond. 
Um, and I'm not sure who that bloke is behind. But anyway, here we go. This is the Welter Stage 5, I believe. He was in a break. Julian Alaphilippe was attacking. And Julian Alaphilippe attacks, brings one of the Movistar blokes. So, well, I think it was Betancourt, but I can't really remember. Oh, it's Mark Soler, sorry. Uh, then we have Kudos on the, trying to drop, like pull it back. Um, this is a classic stage where they have um, basically not too many climbs and then one super steep uh, climb at the end. Uh, and this, I think, is the second last climb. But, so this is where Alaphilippe's trying to set, make the difference. And look at Kudos, doesn't even flick an elbow, just absolutely driving on the front. This is what I mean, on slightly narrow stuff, he's still good. Um, then we're going to skip a little bit ahead to the very front, which is Alexei Lushenko and someone else, I can't remember who it is. But I think it's, um, oh, what's his name? Oh, I can't remember. Anyway, sorry about that. Should do my research a bit more. But anyway, Alaphilippe's on the front. We can now see this is sort of broken up all over the climb. Um, we can see Kudus is now second wheel. Um, still looking pretty fresh. Very high cadence. This is the thing I noticed. Him. He's, got, he's got a very good cadence. He's a very light rider as well. He's about, he's like my height, but about three, three or four kilos lighter than me. Um, and he really does like that high cadence. Um, he looks like he's always... You know, in control, there's a bit of shouting, all these blokes. He seems also a very calm person in some of his interviews, not not super aggressive or anything, which I think is good for a rider because you want to save all your, all the energy you can um, and use it all on the bike. So Alaphilippe's flicking his elbow. Um, and look, Kudas always comes through. He's always willing to work, which is maybe a bit naive, but he's a young rider, so, you know, you can forgive that. And maybe he should have, in realistically, yeah, so Marco Halla, that's the person I was thinking of, sorry. Um, but them two are up front, and Kudis is basically trying to chase them back, because he's probably the best climber here. I mean, he's probably is better than Alaphilippe. I like it would be tough between those two. Uh, so now he's on the flat, and I'm driving towards the climb. The peloton, I think, yeah, is like seven minutes back, so the peloton's basically said, break away, you can have the stage. Um, and there we go. So... There's a decent distance between the two groups, 27 seconds, and Lutschenko and Haller, I mean, they're both big lads. Um, obviously, Lutschenko can climb well, um, but they're both very good on the flat. Well, if you compare it to the people in the back the back group, you've got an AG bloke, can't remember his name. I think it's Villemont's not great on the flat. Kuda's not great on the flat. Oh, no, Goujar, sorry. Goujar's actually he's decent on the flat, but they're not really ever going to catch them. But anyway, there seems to be in some split, I th think... Goujard attack and Kudus followed. And he's still working well. Still, look, he's struggling to hold the wheel. You can tell he's a lighter rider than Goujard. Goujard often is, does quite well in the Belgian races, um, especially like recently in sort of September, October time, like Binch, Shimmy Binch in those races in the Napoleon Cup games. He was doing well. So you can say he's a big, strong rider, Goujard. Um, well, Kudus obviously is the lighter rider and he's struggling a bit on the flat. You can sort of see his body... Like when he's flicking his elbow, he looks pretty bad. But anyway, he's on the climb now. I think it's like a yeah, 6K climb, 5K climb, something like that. Maybe it's even shorter than that, but it's super steep. Gets up to ramps of like 25%. Um, and yeah, it's pretty pretty nuts climb, to be honest. Uh, so Kudis is on the wheel. Well, I think they're just... Oh, it might even be shorter than that. It might only be a 3K climb. I think, I think it's a 3K climb. But here we go. Here comes the, the climb proper. And Kudis just digs. Look at you can see the difference between them two. Like he just looks so lively and comfortable going uphill while Gujar's really labouring and like rocking and rolling is like you can see he's given up already. But Kudus basically it's forty three seconds to close on Lushenko, which it's like hard to tell. Like most people thought Kudus would do it because he looks super fresh. Um he attacked quite a lot and like everyone thought Lushenko had been out with Halla for a decent amount of time and everyone was sort of thinking I remember the commentary at the time was the gap started to come down a little bit. I think it came down by like five five to ten seconds and people were wondering. But unfortunately, Lutschenko was the stronger rider, uh, which is pretty impressive. Lutschenko is actually quite a big lad, um, but Kudus is definitely the lighter rider. But you can see he's got really nice cadence, really enjoy it. Like when you watch it, he's got very good pedaling technique. Looks pretty comfortable on the bike. Um, just looks like a world-class climber. Um, I think he just needs to work on maybe... His savviness in the breakaway if he wants to win a stage. Uh, be 
because even Lander in the Giro had struggled to win. Look, there he goes past Haller. It's like a different speed. But can you see, like, it's quite a staccato effort because here it's, like, chill and then it gets ramps up massively. I'm not sure if he prefers that or not. He seems to have done better on those two because the one in um, earlier in Spain, Valencia, that was also a very steep climb, uh, which he seems to have done well. Yeah, so the gap sort of came down a bit, but not really, like... He sort of, I think, overextended himself early on because he really wanted to try and bridge early. Um, but unfortunately, Lichenko won. But I think for 2018, I think Kudis can definitely have a good season. I could imagine him to picking up a couple of stage wins in Roman D or Tour de Suisse or something like that. Um, and I think, yeah, I think he's definitely one for the future. Could he win... A grand tour, probably not. I don't think his time trial is good enough, but I think definitely he could do a sort of a, um, a role similar to um, Spielak, where he sort of gets um, those week long stage victories and potentially could focus, get a couple grand tour wins. So, cheers for watching um, and see you in the next bit.